Hey guys, I'm Rob Adams. I've been a wedding filmmaker for a long time. I shot my first wedding in 1997. I've kind of learned what I need in order to make a great film in the edit, so here are five shots that you absolutely need from your bride and groom preps. Number one, anybody will tell you weddings are all about details, details, details. Brides want to see details. They want to see rings. They want to see the papery. They want to see all the little jewelry items. They want to see the DIY things they've done. So make sure you take the time to do your detail shots. If you have to get there a little bit early ahead of the photographer to ensure you have the time to do it, do it. Those detail shots are generic and can be used anywhere in a film. Number two, the bride and groom dressing. Obviously, you want to get some shots of the bride and groom putting on those final touches before they head out for the first look of the ceremony. This is your your opportunity to put them in some really good light, whether it's dramatic or light and airy, and shoot away. Get some details here as well. The groom's bow tie, shots of the intricacy of the dress. The possibilities here are endless. Personally, I like to bounce around and get a sequence of shots that cut together really cool in the edit. Number three, the supporting cast. Bride and groom preps is not just about the bride and the groom. There's other people there as well. There's parents, there's bridal party, there's kids, there's pets. Shoot a lot of that stuff. The bride wants to see other things other than herself the morning of her wedding. So get the dog, get the cat, get the bridal party hanging out. All those little shots will give your edit more depth. For the supporting cast, I try to aim for about two to three shots for each of the bride and the groom's house. Number four, the reveal of the bride. There's really not many more emotional moments than the first time dad sees bride on the wedding day. Plan it out ahead of time, know where you're gonna be standing, put the bride in good light, and make sure when dad walks in, you're ready to capture his reaction. Sequence this out as well. Make sure you're on dad's face for the first time he sees her to get the genuine reaction, then move around and get different angles to give the scene more movement. Make it look like you had multiple cameras in the room. A little bit of hustle can help you achieve that. Number five, leaving the prep location. Sometimes a simple shot of the bride and groom leaving the house in some way, shape, or form can get your edit to the next scene smoothly and creatively. Personally, I like to get a shot of the bride leaving the house, whether it's down the stairs from a low angle, letting the dress kind of slide off the stairs, or a shot of all the guys walking down the street in a city. The variety here is endless. There's so much you can do with transitional scenes. If you're riding with the bride and groom, in a trolley or a bus. Get shots of the motion, of the driving, of the actual act of moving to the next location. These shots are really powerful in an edit when they're used to tie two scenes together. So take it from me, I've shot a lot of weddings and I've edited a lot of wedding films. Having a lot of material from bride and groom preps to give yourself options and planning those shots out in advance so you know what you're gonna have when it comes to post-production will really make a much more powerful film. Need some wedding day inspiration? Download this free guide to shooting better wedding films in the description below. Do you want more video education content? Who doesn't? Subscribe right here to Adorama TV to my show, Video Village. I'll be bringing you tons of new content. And follow me on Instagram, at Rob Adams Films.